I am going to be doing a reading passage. Uh, this is the first reading passage in the official Isles book on, from Cambridge. And this passage is the Dover Bronze Age Boat. The moment I get a reading passage, the first thing I do is look at the kinds of questions that are there on this passage. And when I turn to look at the pages where the questions are listed, I see that there are five fill in the blank questions. There are four true and false not given questions. And there are four short answer questions. Now what I know about the way the questions are structured is that the fill in the blanks question will go in a systematic order. Question, the answer to question two will come after the answer to question one. And the answer to question five is after the answers I find to question four. So I know that it goes in a systematic order. The same thing happens with the true and false not given too. The TFNG or the true false not given questions also go in a chronological order in the passage. And the short answer questions of 10 to 13, four questions, this also go in a systematic order in the passage. So which means that if I can find one, it will be easy for me to find the others. Now there are many ways of doing a reading passage and I am going to demonstrate one way in which I will be reading the passage only once. Yes, you heard that right. I am going to be reading the passage only once and trying to find the answers for all the 13 questions. And this can be applied to any reading passage. It saves a lot of time and it's and I have found personally that this is one of the most efficient methods of doing it. So if this suits you, you can adopt this. Okay, so let's start. So when we look at the passage, the first thing we do is to look at the kinds of questions we have. So the first question I have is a fill in the blank. 1992 is the cue for that. So until I find one, I will not be able to find two because this goes in the systematic order in the passage. So 1992 is my cue. And if I look at the true and false, I like to look at two of the questions rather than one. Archaeologists realize that the boat had been damaged on purpose. And question number seven, initially only the technological aspects of the boat were examined. So these are the two things I'm going to keep in mind. And uh, here is the first question in the short answers. Question number 10, how far under the ground was the boat found? How far under the ground? So it's got to be some distance from the ground that the boat was found. So now I start looking at my paragraph one. It was 1992. In England, workmen were building a new road through the heart of Dover to connect the ancient port and the channel tunnel, which when it opened just two years later, was to be the first land link between Britain and Europe for over 10,000 years. A small team from the Canterbury Archaeological Trust, CAT, worked alongside workmen recording new discoveries brought to light by the machines. So I just read, finished paragraph one. Now I look at it, 1992, the boat was discovered. So far I have not come across anything about the boat in this paragraph. And archeologists realized that the boat had been damaged. Again, nothing about the boat has come in here. How far under the ground the boat was found, nothing about the boat has come in paragraph one. So I don't have to read paragraph one again ever in this test. Right? So now I go on to paragraph 2. At the base of the deep shaft, 6 meters below the modern streets, a wooden structure was revealed. Cleaning away at the waterlogged site overlying the timbers, archaeologists realized that its very true nature. They had found a prehistoric boat preserved by a type of sediment in which it was buried. It was then named the Dover Bronze Age Boat. So here we have the discovery of the boat and this archaeologists have discovered a boat here. So let's go back to our question and see what is the question. 1992, the boat was discovered during the construction of something, right? What was being constructed? We have the construction part here, right? The build, they were building a new road and then they discovered the boat. So for us, the answer for the first question 1992, the boat was discovered during the construction of a, it's got to be a road, it's one word only. So we go to our answer sheet and we make it R-O-A-D, road. 
right? Then we go back here. 2002, nothing about 2002 has come in this paragraph. Archaeologists realized that the boat had been damaged on purpose. They had just discovered the boat, nothing about its damage, whether it was not, nothing has come so far. How far under the ground was the boat found? Is there anything for that? I just look at the first line again. At the base of the deep shaft, six meters below the modern streets, a wooden structure was revealed. Cleaning away the waterlogged site overlying the timbers, they realized its true nature. They found a prehistoric boat. So the prehistoric boat was found here six meters below the modern streets. So my answer for question number 10. How far under the ground was the boat found? So I have got the answer here and that is 6 meters. So I just, what's the question number 10, right? So 6 meters, that's my answer. Then I go back to the third paragraph. About 9 meters of the boat's length was recovered. One end lay beyond the excavation and had to be left. What survived consisted essentially of four intricately carved oak planks. Two on the bottom joined along the central seam by a complicated system of wedges and timbers and two at the side curved and stitched to the others. The seams had been made watertight by the pads of moss fixed by wedges and few stitches. What do we have here? Nothing has come about. And then, what do we have here? Archaeologists found the boat had been damaged on purpose. No idea. Nothing has come about whether it had been damaged on purpose or not. And in, even if that is not given, then I'll take a look at this. Initially, only the technological aspects of the boat were examined. Nothing about this also has come. What natural material had been secured to the boat to prevent water entering? Did, do I have an answer for that? About 9 meters length recovered, survived, consistent, essentially intricately carved, central seams, complicated systems, wedges and timbers and two sides. The seams had been made watertight by the pads of moss fixed by the few wedges and few stitches. So I have here the seams had been made watertight. Watertight would mean that the water could not enter it, right? So what natural material had been secured to the boat to prevent water from entering the boat? So I have a, I have the clue here that it had been made, made watertight by a natural material, he says, so pads, pads of moss. That's my answer, right? So pads of moss is the answer for the question number 11. Let me go back. I move on to the next paragraph because there's nothing else for me to search for in this paragraph. 2002 has not yet come. So that is the first, uh, it's like next fill in the blanks. The timbers that closed the recovered end of the boat had been removed in antiquity when it was abandoned. But much about its original shape had been deduced. There was also evidence from missing upper side planks. The boat was not a wreck, but had been deliberately discarded, dismantled and broken. Perhaps it had been ritually killed at the end of its life, like other Bronze Age objects. Do I have an answer for this year? 2002 in international something. 2002 has not yet come in, so I, I skipped that. Archaeologists realized that the boat had been damaged on purpose. Something of that was mentioned here. Antiquity, original shape, deduced. There was also evidence of missing upper sides. The boat was not a wreck, but had been deliberately discarded, dismantled and broken. The word wreck would mean that it, it, it had been an accident. But here it, it was not an accident. It had been deliberately discarded, dismantled and broken. Perhaps it had been ritually killed at the end of its life like other Bronze Age objects. So I have an answer for this here. Archaeologists realized that the boat had been damaged on purpose and 
we find a corroborative evidence for this in our passage. So the answer for 6 is true. Then we go back here. What do we have the next short answer question? We found answer for 2, third, 12th one. What aspect of the board was the focus of 2012 reconstruction? We do not have anything about 2012 here. We do not have anything about 2012 here, so we move, we move on. With hindsight, it was significant that the boat was found and studied by mainstream archaeologists who naturally focused on its cultural contexts. At the time, ancient boats were often considered only from a narrower technological perspective, but news about the Dover boat reached a broad audience. In 2002, on the 10th anniversary of the discovery, the Dover Bronze Age Boat Trust hosted a conference where the meeting of different traditions became apparent. Alongside technical papers about the boat, other speakers explored its social and economic contexts and the religious perceptions of the boat in Bronze Age societies. Many speakers came from overseas and debate about cultural connections were renewed. So I go back to my question, 2002, yes, I have 2002 here, 2002 is here. So what's my question about 2002? An international dash was held to gather information. What was held in 2002 in international what? In 2002, on the 10th anniversary of the discovery, the Dover Bronze Age Boat Trust hosted a conference where the meeting of different traditions became apparent. So here it says that it hosted a conference, but here we want to know an international dash was held. So where is the thing about international part? Hosted a conference where the meeting of different traditions became apparent alongside technical papers about the boat. Other speakers explored its social, economic context and the religious perceptions of the boat in Bronze Age societies. Many speakers came from overseas. <coughs> here we have it. So a conference was organized and people came from overseas. So that is the international part of it for us. So in 2002, an international dash was held to gather information. So the answer for two would be conference. So we go back here and see if this has an answer next. <coughs> Sorry. Initially, only the technological aspects of the boat were examined. Do we have anything about that? With hindsight, it was significant the boat was found and studied by the mainstream archaeologists who naturally focused on its cultural context. Here it says that they focused on its cultural context. At the same time, ancient boats were often considered only from the narrower technical or technological perspective. Now look at how this can be a little confusing. Normally, the boat would have been considered from technological perspective, but in this case, <coughs> sorry, it was considered from the cultural context. They considered it from the cultural context. And what do we have here? Initially, only the technological aspects of the boat were examined. So, this is not correct. They were not examining from the technological aspects, but from the cultural context. So, the answer for seven is false. Now, 8. Archaeologists went back to the site to try and find the missing northern end of the boat. So far, we have not come across anything related to that. What aspect of the boat was focused on 2012 reconstruction? 2012 reconstruction, we have not yet come across 2012 <coughs> as a year. So, we move on to the next paragraph. Within seven years of excavation, the Dover boat had been conserved and displayed, but it was apparent that there were issues that could not be resolved simply by studying the old boat. Experimental archaeology seemed to be a solution. A boat reconstruction, half-scale or full-size, would permit assessment of different hypotheses regarding its build and missing end. The possibility of returning to Dover to search for the boat's unexpected unexcavated northern end was explored but practical and financial difficulties were insurmountable and there was no guarantee that the timbers had survived the previous decade 
in the changed environment. Do we have anything for 2004? No. 2004, we have not yet come across anything about 2004 here. Nothing in this paragraph for 2004, so I move on here. Archaeologists went back to the site to try and find the missing northern end of the boat. Yes, something about that was mentioned. Could not be resolved. The possibility, yes, here it is. The possibility of returning to Dover to search for the boat's unexcavated northern end was explored. But the practical and financial difficulties were insurmountable. And there was no guarantee that the timber should survive the previous decade in the change in environment. Here also it could be a little confusing for students because here it says that the possibility of going back to Dover was explored. But practical and financial difficulties were insurmountable. And there was no guarantee that the timbers had survived the previous decade in the change in environment. So only the possibility was explored, but they did not go back. So archaeologists went back to the site. No, they did not go back to the site. The possibility was explored and it was found that it was not practical and it was the difficulties were insurmountable. So the answer for 8 would be false. Then we we'll look at 9. Evidence found in 2004 suggests that the Bronze Age boat had been used for trade. Nothing of that sort has been mentioned here. We have not yet come across 2004. Then what aspect of the boat was the focus of 2012 reconstruction? Nothing yet. 2012 we have not yet come to 2012. So now we move on here. Detailed proposals to reconstruct the boat were drawn up in 2004. Archaeological evidence was beginning to suggest a Bronze Age community straddling the channel brought together by the sea rather than separated by it. In a region today divided by languages and borders, archaeologists had a duty to inform the general public about their common cultural heritage. We go back here, 2004, yes, we have 2004 here, we have 2004 here. What does it say? The dash for the reconstruction were produced. Something for the reconstruction were produced. What was produced? Detailed proposals to reconstruct the boat were drawn up. Right in the first sentence, we have the clue for that. Detailed proposals to reconstruct the boat were drawn up in 2004. Here it says, dash for the reconstruction were produced. And here it says, detailed were drawn up. So we have that answer here as proposals, you know, detailed proposals to reconstruct the boat were drawn up. So the answer for three would be proposals. Is that a plural? Yes. Proposals. So now we look at 2007 and uh, nothing about 2007 was there in this. It's all about 2004. And then we move on to the ninth question. Evidence found in 2004 suggested that the Bronze Age boat had been used for trade. 2004 Bronze Age boat trade. Three things for us. Detailed proposals reconstruct 2004. Yes, Bronze Age community starting the channel brought together by sea rather than separated by it in a region today. Languages, borders, archaeologists, general public about their common cultural heritage. This. This paragraph deals with 2004, but we do not have an answer whether uh, there is no evidence found that it had been used for trade. They just say that the communities came together, but there is no evidence to say that, it, that they came together for trade. So what I will do is, I will put 9 as not given, but I will just put a question mark in front of it because in case it comes, in case the answer comes further down, I don't want uh, to be making a mistake. Then we go back here, which aspect of 2012 reconstruction? No, we have not come to 2012 at all yet. So now we go on to read the next paragraph. The boat project began in England, but it was conceived from the start as a European collaboration. Reconstruction was only a part of the scheme that would include major exhibition and an extensive educational and outreach program. Discussions began early in 2005 with archaeological bodies, universities and heritage organizations either side of the channel. 
There was much enthusiasm and support and an official launch of the project was held at an international seminar in France in 2007. Financial support was confirmed in 2008 and the project then named Boat 1550 BC got underway in June 2011. Well, we have 2007 here. That is question number 4, 2007 here, Boat 1550 BC. Yes, Boat 1550 BC. So we must find the answer for this. What's the answer we're looking for? The dash of the boat took place. Something of the boat 1515 BC took place. What, what took place? Where does it come? Here there was a much enthusiasm and support and an official launch of the project was held at an international seminar. Financial support was confirmed and the project then named got underway. Can it be the project? The project of boat took place? No. It can't be the project because project would be a process. This is not a process. This is we are looking at an event here. There was much enthusiasm and support an official launch of the project. Launch. Could that be the an answer? One word. Yes. That's the answer for this. 2007 it was launched and then 2008 finances were confirmed and project started off in 2011. Got underway in 2011. So in 2007, it was the launch of the project. So the answer for 4 is launch. Sorry. Launch of the project. So we have finished 4. 2012, fifth answer, 2012. No, we have not yet come to 2012. Evidence found in 2004 suggested the Bronze Age boat had been used for trade. This I have kept it as not given for now. In this paragraph also nothing no other information has come about 2004, so I still keep it as not given. Then 2012 reconstruction, no, we have not yet come to 2012, we have been in 2007 only. So now I move on to the next paragraph. Small team began to make the boat at the start of 2012 on Roman lawn outside Dover Museum. A full scale reconstruction of the mid section had been made in 1996, primarily to see how Bronze Age replica tools performed. In 2012, however, the hull shape was at the center of the work. So modern power tools were used to carve the old planks before turning to prehistoric tools for finishing. It was decided to make the replica half scale for reasons of cost and time. And synthetic materials were used for the stitching owing to doubts about the scaling and tight timetable. So what do we have here? Answer for 2012 Bronze Age. The Bronze Age dash, <coughs> sorry, the Bronze Age dash featured the boat and other objects 2012. We have it here 2012 and we are looking at Bronze Age something. Bronze Age, the Bronze Age dash featured the boat and other objects. What about the Bronze Age what? The Bronze Age replica? No, the Bronze Age replica is not the answer, hull shaped prehistoric tools they just it, the whole information is about they made a half scale replica here but there's not nothing about the bronze age and other tools and other objects featured boat and other objects there's no mention of anything about boat and other objects we we'll just keep it pending for now let's take a look at the next one evidence found in 2004 no still continues to be not given what aspect of the boat was the focus of 2012 reconstruction? Yes, we had talked about 2012 reconstruction here. Do we have what which aspect of it was in 2012? A full scale reconstruction of the mid section was made in 1996. Primarily to see how bronze replica tools performed. In 2012, however, the hull shape was at the center of the work. The hull shape was at the center of the work, so modern tools were used to carve oak planks. So in 2012 reconstruction, the focus was on the hull shape. How many words do we have here? No, it's not about that. It's about this. Which, what aspect of the boat was focus of 2012 reconstruction? No more than three words and or a number. So my answer would be the hull or the hull shape, which is better. Um, however, the hull shape was at the center of work. So the hull shape is what I would look at. So my answer for uh, 
12 would be the hull shape. Right. So now what is it? I've got 13 and 5 to be done. 13. Which two factors influence the decision not to make a full scale reconstruction? Yes, we read about something about half scale reconstruction here. It was decided to make a replica half scale for reasons of cost and time. They did not make a full scale uh, replica, they made a half scale replica for reasons of cost and time and synthetic materials were used. So the answer for which two factors? Two factors influence decision making, cost and time. So no more than three words and or a number. So I can write cost and time. That leaves me with just one to be answered, fifth one. The Bronze Age dash featured other boats, boats and other objects. So I just go back. I don't have anything here. Let me read the last paragraph. Meanwhile, the exhibition was being prepared ready for opening in July 2012 at the Castle Museum in Boulogne sur Mer. I don't know how do you pronounce this. Entitled Beyond the Horizon, Societies of the Channel and North Sea 3500 years ago. It brought together for the first time a remarkable collection of Bronze Age objects, including many new discoveries for commercial archaeology and some of the great treasures of the past. The reconstructed boat as a symbol of maritime connections that bound together the communities on either side of the channel was the centerpiece. I think we have the answer here. The Bronze Age jash featured the boat and other objects. Here we are saying it was the centerpiece. And here we are saying that other objects, Bronze Age objects, but where, what was it featured in? Museum. It was not featured at the museum. The museum is a place, yeah, here you think we have. You know, the exhibition was being prepared, ready for opening in July 2012. Yes, in 2012, the Bronze Age exhibition featured the boat and other objects. Does it suit? Or is it the museum? Ready for opening, but museum is the place where it was organized. The exhibition was being organized in the museum. And in the museum, the Bronze Age objects and the reconstructed boat were the centerpiece. Yes, we'll go with exhibition. E -X -H -I. Exhibition. Have we finished everything? We finished all the 13. And how much time have we taken so far? We've taken 26 minutes by discussion with loud reading, with rereading and all. If you actually do this silently, I would be doing it much faster. And what we need to understand about the reading test is that it's a, it's a test of your comprehension. So you cannot answer the questions correctly without reading it. So learn to read the paragraphs at least once and then answer the questions. You don't have to answer it all the true and false ones, all the fill in the blanks ones. You can, you, if you're intelligent enough to um, find the way to answer it, you can answer all the 40, 40 or 13 questions in the passage by just reading each paragraph once and seeing whether you have the first question because we know the true and false not given the fill in the blanks and the short answer questions go in a systematic order they go in a chronological order in the passage so that clue is the biggest clue for us to answer these kind of passages i hope that helped you thank you